So let's kick start this year with a video series that will help you understand all Warframes in the game. I will name this series as to how to play a Warframe like a pro and, I will include the link at the pinned comment so you can search all the Warframes included in this series. Take note that Ash is the very first Warframe for this series and what you are about to see here is an in-depth guide on how to play Ash based on my years of experience using the Warframe, this will talk about an in-depth overview of how to use his abilities effectively, his strengths, his weaknesses, how to overcome them, where can you farm Ash, and all the crazy combos you can do with this Warframe, before we begin this video, I would humbly ask that if you aren't subscribed to the channel, then please help us by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. YouTube says that 55% of you watching our content are not yet subscribed so if you can help out with the algorithm, we will greatly appreciate it. And now, let's begin this video. For those returning players and new ones, there have been changes in how you can acquire the Ash components right now. Ash's main blueprint can be purchased from the market. Ash's component blueprints are obtained from Venus Proxima for his systems, Neptune Proxima for his neuroptics, and Pluto Proxima for chassis and rotation C of Empyrean defense and survival missions. So why would a player use Ash? There are a variety of reasons, and it lies in how useful he is in a mission with the help of his abilities. His most basic one is his invisibility, and this is one of his qualities of being a ninja. His smoke screen ability him to throw a smoke bomb that staggers enemies within range for a short period then turn him invisible for a short duration. The invisibility is affected by duration while the stagger effect is affected by range mods but, the stagger duration is not affected by any mods. Now, when I say that his smoke screen can give you short invisibility, I'm being concrete with this one since Ash invisibility is the shortest in the game. In the past, you may find this problematic and players would even result to using a double arcane trickery which procs efficiently in the past with his fourth ability and even busted when the marked for death fatal teleport was a thing. But right now, double stacking arcane doesn't work, and marked for death fatal teleport was nerf. So, does this leave Ash survivability kit vulnerable? Well to be fair, Ash is designed this way in the first place, and short invisibility is just right for this warframe, why? It's because of his ninja theme wherein smoke bombs only work for a short duration and it's only some sort of an escape method to get away from enemies. Long story short, it's some sort of a safety net, an escape that will give you time to recuperate and fight again. If this was a stealth game, then Ash would be someone sneaky but it's hard to do that in Warframe since it's a looter shooter game. The concept of ninja in this game is about those fancy movements and not their sneakiness. If you are a new player and hope to play some stealth gameplay in Warframe, then there's some, but don't expect missions to be sneaky. Expect that it will be total mayhem and invisibility in the game is a form of survivability. One of the best survivability that is. But for Ash, it's only an escape, and there's another form of survivability right now. First of all, the shield gating mechanic allows you to have short invulnerability after depleting your shields. Secondly, the game now adds a mechanic wherein there's a 1 second delay on detection after your invisibility comes off. This is good for envy frames, especially for Ash since it gives them enough time to recast their ability. Right now, players are just relying on shield gating and this mechanic to recast their invisibility but, to be honest, it's kind of annoying sometimes recasting Ash invisibility especially if you have a little duration on it. For pure seeking shuriken builds, or even fatal teleport, this won't be a problem since most can put the narrow minded mod along with primed continuity to get it to 20 seconds duration, sacrificing two mod slots and lots of mod capacity in the process. That is why sometimes I get too lazy and do not even bother with invisibility at all. If you take notice, Ash Prime has some decent health and armor values that you can ramp this up and turn Ash into a semi tank ninja warframe. Okay, delete that. Semi-tank is an understatement if we take the armor bonus of Mecha Pulse in mind. The first shinobi art I want to discuss is the ability of Ash to semi-nuke and semi-tank at the same time with the help of the Mecha Pulse mod. A few months ago, this combo was broken that it allows you to force bleed proc every time. I'm talking about using rapiers. Rapiers have finisher access, and one of the best finisher sets in the game. Rapier finishers, except for the downed finisher, are multi-hit affairs. Most rapier finishers have assured bleed procs attached to them. The rapier down finisher is lightning fast for how much damage it does, and borderline instant with berserkers stacked. 
How does this work with Ash? A simple fatal teleport to a marked target can proc both Mecha Pulse and Mecha Empowered instantly, allowing you to have access to great armor bonus percentage, and 30 meters AoE bleeds. The only problem is, the AoE bleed is not as lethal as before, as it seems that finisher from Rapior is not 100% guaranteed bleed procs anymore. The same goes with the Mark for Death Fatal Teleport set up with the Mecha Pulse set. It can be lethal if it procs the bleed from the finisher, but it's a burden when not. Aside from reliability, you should also factor kill speed with this setup. Finisher builds sometimes are not capable of maintaining your kill speed as it's slower compared to just AoE nuking enemies with something like the Kuva Brahma. Another problematic part of this is how unreliable and slow the marking of enemies with the mecha mods are. It's an unreliable source of nuking sometimes, especially with finisher builds as you would wait for your dog to mark a target. Honestly, I'm suggesting that you step away from any finisher builds right now with Ash if you are going on normal star chart missions. But how about the lazy tank build squad leader? Is it still possible? Yes, it is, and that is by using a weapon that can both deal huge damage and heal you at the same time. I have included the link of my lazy Ash build in the pinned comments below but for reference, it's a combination of a heavy attack quasis and Ash build for tanking attacks. You can also make use of the Helminth system and subsuming the Gloom ability if you want. This way, you will get free from using any weapon, including those new king guns in the game which has good slash procs and can help you proc the mecha mod set bonus with ease. Like I have said, if you are pursuing a lazy tank build for Ash, then expect to get annoyed sometimes with how slow the marking of enemies is. Having the heavy attack quasis with life strike, or gloom with any new gun so you can heal yourself and just kill a bunch of targets including that marked enemy. Okay, talking about his invisibility alone allows us to discuss different combos. Now let's move on to his shuriken ability. The ability is straightforward in what it does, it throws shuriken that deals slash damage with a 100% chance to proc. Damage is affected by ability strength and theorem demulsant. The bleed damage over time inflicts 43.75% of the initial damage per tick for a total of 9 ticks over 9 seconds, due to Ash's passive. The bleed damage bypasses armor. Should Shuriken hit an enemy's head, the bleed dot will inflict 87.5% of the initial damage per tick for the same duration. Having Saku's Xata's Whisper subsume on Ash will allow a constant headshot which leads to more damage from this ability. But is it enough to make the ability good in terms of DPS? Not really in my opinion. The main point of using Ash first ability is you want to have removed all the armor of an enemy using his Seeking Shrek and Augment. In the past, this is the strongest weapon of Ash, and why players love him in level cap missions like Endless Survival. Using the Seeking Shrek and Augment, Ash can strip armor of any enemy entirely with only 143% ability strength. It works great on bosses, especially in sorties when they are high level. A good example is Caleb of Thumb. Ash can strip the armor of the Sedna boss and you can easily kill him with your weapon. However, there are limitations in using Seeking Shuriken as it does not work on all bosses. Also, it does not work against the Sisters of Parvos and even on the Kuva Leeches. Seeking Shuriken Ash was a very popular build in the past but right now, it's slowly disappearing because of how insane the new debuffing abilities are right now on the new Warframes. Just take for example the Broken Warframe's Gaze ability which does not only remove armor, but also the shield of the enemies. The same goes with Caliban's ultimate ability. Seeking Shuriken Ash is becoming obsolete little by little because of these new total defense removal abilities. But, the good news is, Ash Shuriken is also the subsumable ability of the Warframe, making it universally good for other Warframes. You can slap this in any of your favorite Warframe and just add 143% power strength, and you will have an ability to strip the armor of the enemies. But then again, let me ask you this, would you do it knowing that there's pillage that can strip shield and armor, and adds shield to your Warframe to make use of the shield gating mechanic? Well, I guess not, also knowing the fact that how weak enemies right now in Warframe, level 9999 in the past was like slapping a big rock with spaghetti. But now, because of the lowered sponginess, they are easily susceptible to attacks especially against bleed procs, condition status combos, and even those combos that can reach the 2 billion damage cap. Ash Seeking Shuriken was a very good utility in the past but now, it's slowly fading away from existence. Next, let's talk about his teleport ability. This is also a straightforward ability, 
it lets you teleport to an enemy but, it gets lethal when you add its fatal teleport augment. Earlier, we have discussed how you can utilize this ability with the augment, using it to proc arcane trickery to resolve the low invisibility of ash. But that is in the past, as there's no double arcane trickery stacking effect right now, and the initial mark for death ash combo was nerfed to the ground, but still, you can do a marked for death combo with ash right now. Just don't expect the same nuking experience with millions of damage, and the insane survivability that it offers because, during those times, it's a 100% proc for arcane trickery. Just a quick tip for those who don't know, arcane trickery was very broken since it doesn't just offer normal invisibility. The invisibility of this arcane can't be dispelled by those nullifiers and 100% proc means you are immune to everything that can't see you for the rest of the mission. The final ability of Ash is called Blade Storm which allows you to mark enemies and send out a couple of clones to kill those marked targets afterward. Marking enemies drains 12 energy each, or 6 energy while Ash is invisible using smoke screen. The damage of each clone is affected by ability strength, steel charge, savage silence, radiant finish, arcane fury, arcane blade charger, combo counter multipliers, and viral status. Blade Storm gains 25% additional damage for each combo multiplier, up to a 3.75 times damage multiplier at 12 times combo, or 4 times with Venka Prime equipped at 13 times combo. Also, you should know that the animation speed is affected by attack speed mods such as Fury, up to the finisher cap of plus 50%. Buffs such as Speed, Warcry, and Arcane Strike will only buff Ash's animation speed when he joins Blade Storm via teleport and not the clones. And lastly, animation speed is not affected by the base weapon's attack speed, Berserker Fury, or casting speed mods like Natural Talent. Why am I telling you all these stuff about the ability? Well, because right now, in my opinion, Blade Storm is the only ability which is interesting on Nash. Take note, this is only my opinion but, I say this because after all those years playing Ash, I have witnessed how strong this Warframe is, and how he becoming slowly obsolete now. I just remember those days when seeking shuriken was a mad skill for high level plays because of its superior utility. I also remember having tons of combos with fatal teleport, when nuking wasn't that vast before, and only the names of Saren came out when we talked about it, Ash was one of those unexpected war frames that you can use to nuke multiple enemies with a fatal teleport jet kit hex setup, it was complicated but fun. However, right now, because of the new things added in the game, I feel like Ash is becoming more and more obsolete each time Digital Extremes releases a new Warframe that has the same ability as Ash. Why would you even bother using Ash for invisibility in spy missions when other Warframes have more invisibility duration or even infinite invisibility? Hell, there are even Warframes that can be great on areas like spy missions, without even using invisibility. Also, why would you use Ash with Seeking Shuriken when other Warframes don't just remove the armor, but also shields? And also, why would you use a Fatal Teleport setup that is a one-shot, one-kill ability, when you can use other things right now that can simply nuke multiple enemies at once? Don't get me wrong, you know that you can set up a Fatal Teleport nuke but the problem is, it's not as effective as other nuking weapons in the game right now. And mind you, I'm not just talking about one single mission in here, which is survival missions. I'm talking about how reliable a setup is in other missions like Exterminate, Capture, Defense, and the high-end variant of these missions like the Steel Path levels. It's kind of funny that in the past, the community was very keen on pursuing Digital Extremes to buff his Blade Storm augment. Months and years have passed, Blade Storm then becomes a good ability but, we mostly did not see it coming that Ash is becoming obsolete as days, months, and years passed. His first, second, and third ability are now slowly becoming useless if I were to rate Ash right now in a Warframe tier list, I would say that he had dropped from a strong pick to a Warframe that is decent but needs rework. Because honestly, in my point of view, I get interested in playing Ash right now to see how much damage my clones can deal with using the Helminth system or, how high can my slash and bleed combo with his passive ability. That's the main reason right now why I play Ash, it's because of his Blade Storm and passive ability. It's like it sacrifices three abilities to make one good, and this is why I would love to see an Ash rework in the future. But now, let's try to focus on the things which can pique your interest in playing Ash. 
Right now, you can deal millions of damage with Ash Blade Storm if you are going to subsume either the Silence or Radial Blind ability into this Warframe using the Helminth system. Among the two, I highly recommend Silence since it is a duration based ability and you don't need to recast it. The next thing you need is some power strength in your build, then a little range with the stretch mod, Arcane Fury for more damage, and Arcane Trickery for invisibility. If you don't mind recasting the smoke screen over and over again, then you can replace it with Arcane Energize. But be careful with this combo, especially at endless survival runs as you may find some difficulty in terms of kill speed when you will just rely on the Blade Storm ability alone. Also, giving silence some range would cause enemy to stagger in place for a couple of seconds, especially since we have the Savage Silence Augment so don't just stay in place and wait for the enemies to come to you. Even with this build, you'll have to balance when to use Blade Storm and when to melee the hell out of the enemies. Another thing that is keeping Ash relevant right now, in my opinion, is because he has this passive ability that gives any slash procs inflicted by Ash from both weapons and abilities to deal 25% more damage and last 50% longer. And mind you, bonus is also independent of faction damage bonuses, stacking multiplicatively with them. While the bleed duration bonus stacks additively with status duration mods such as Lingering Torment. Nine years have passed and still, Slash is still meta and considered by many as overpowered in the game. And every weapon that has high Slash damage will be more deadly when wielded with Ash. There was a time when players go crazy with a heavy attack Slash build Ash as it can completely obliterate even level cap enemies with one shot. The damage is incense sometimes that it's not even shown in the monitor, and enemies simply die within an instance. Right now, I'm looking forward for how good Nash Aqua Blades will be when the new augment for this subsume ability, called Surging Blades will finally get released during the Echoes of War update. Honestly speaking, these are the two main reasons why I still play Ash today. Blade Storm is actually a good DPS if you know how to support it with melee kills or even new KOE kills with your guns. And also, his passive to increase bleed procs is pretty handy, especially when you are trying a mean max build with all the damage mods, critical mods, and subsume damage boosting ability in your Ash. But in other cases, well, I can say that Ash won't be touched by players if we will just talk about usefulness in a mission. Most of the mission that Ash will shine is assassinating a specific boss like Kayla de Thumb, survival and endless survival runs, or dealing with higher level demolished units through removing their armor and easy kills if you of course, like a bit of challenge dealing with level cap enemies. But, that's it. Ash is not the same as before. Remember the time wherein Ash was so famous because he can one-shot the Wolf of Saturn boss with his fatal teleport? Those were glorious days. In my opinion, Asha needs a rework if he wants to compete with other versatile Warframes right now or, he needs a power boost to compete against top tier damage dealing Warframes. Almost all old Warframes need a rework right now and I hope that we will see it this year. For now, I can say that Ash is still powerful, but he gets overshadowed by other Warframes that has an ability that does better. If not a rework, then please Digital Extremes, give some missions wherein certain Warframes will be better than other meta Warframes. Now, let me know your comments and opinions about this Ash video. Also, be sure to check back later as we will be discussing Banshee next. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off.